Gentlemen, uh, welcome to the Tuesday, April 18th, 2023, regular Board of Ed meeting, uh, regular Ed Board of Meeting for Mahopak. Let's, uh, can I get a motion to open the meeting, please? Second. All in favor? Let's please rise for this um, Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Thank you. We have a very busy agenda. I'm going to jump right into it. Uh, I'm going to uh, turn it over to our illustrious superintendent, Ms. Tona. everyone welcome to our meeting tonight we're very excited to have our winter athletes who have had a very successful season with us this evening so we're very proud of all of their accomplishments and at this time I'd like to invite our athletic director Steve Luciana to the podium thank you for having me and thank you for having our athletes here tonight um, our winter season was very successful. Uh, our girls' basketball team made it to the county center. Uh, it was the first time since 2014 um, that they, they made it there, which is a huge accomplishment. And it was the first time the county center has been open since COVID. So having our girls play there was, a great, it was great for us. Um, we had our wrestling coach was um, honored into the Section 1 Hall of Fame. Our hockey coach, even though our team record-wise, might not have had a great season, but the way they played, the way they represent Mayapak here in League uh, Coach of the Year honors, are, uh, we had two wrestlers qualify for the state tournament. Uh, we had gymnasts uh, qualify for the state tournament. We had gymnasts qualify as All-Americans. Our cheerleading team had a great performance in the Section 1 championships. They won our own uh, Mayapak uh, competition here. Um, overall, it was just a great season. And then um, if you look at the you know, student-athlete part of it, every single one of our teams made scholar-athlete teams except for two. So we were very successful in the classroom as well. So great job by our winter athletes and a great job by our coaches this season. <laughs> uh, we're going to bring up our athletes now who um, earned all league, all section, and all state honors. Uh, first, we're going to be, begin with skiing. We have James Biakini, All League for Skiing. <laughs> Noah Bonder, All League for Skiing. <laughs> Jack Edwards for Skiing. <laughs> and Victoria Hertzer for Skiing. <laughs> Our cheerleaders, we have Mia Calderella, who is all league and all section. <laughs> Ariana Can Canariata was all league and all section. Uh, Isabella Chioti, all league and all section. A lot of our athletes had games today too, so we have, the good thing is we have multi-sport athletes, so it's, it was tough for a lot of them to come tonight. Uh, Juliana Greco was all league and all section. Uh, Lila Greco was all league and all section. Kira McDowell, all league and all section. Isabella Mariella, all league. Brooke Platt was all league and all section. And Alexis LeBlanc was all league in all sections. We have Emma Long for bowling, all league. Misha Contract for all league for bowling. We have Jake Cousins, all league for basketball.
Liam Scanlon was All League for Basketball. We have Laura Bieberman, who was All League and All Section. Might take a second for her to get up here. Uh, Jess Durbin's will be accepting in her honor. <laughs> Jess, why don't you stay up as well? Jess Durbin's All League and All Section Honorable Mention. Piper Clammer, All League and All Section. All three of our girls basketball players that came up here are also going to be playing college athletics. Uh, Lauren will be going to Adelphi for basketball. Jess will be playing basketball at RPI. And Piper will be playing soccer at the College of St. Rose. Uh, we have Christina Rush, All League. For hockey, we have John Martirano, All League. Onto gymnastics. We have Lexi Castrotaro, who was All League, All Section, All American, and she qualified for the state championships. We have Leah DeMays, who was All League, All Section, and All American. We have Leah Gratt, who was all league, all section, qualified for states, finished all state, I, I believe, third place in the bars, in third place in the bars, and was all American. Great season. <laughs> Riley Hughes, who was all sec, all league, all section, and all American. Caitlin Palange, all league, all section, and earned all American honors. And Kelsey Thim, all league, all section, and also earned all American honors. Next, we have our wrestlers. We have Charles Prismilski who was all league, all section, and also qualified for the state tournament. Did a great job up in Albany for us. Henry, Henry Ramirez, all league, and all section. Pace Zyler, all league, as an eighth grader. Bright future for him. We have Joe Ramirez. Uh, captain of our wrestling team, uh, All-American, I mean, I'm sorry, All-League, all All-Section, and qualified for the state tournament. Did a great job up in Albany. <laughs> Nick Greco, All-League and All-Section. Actually, to go back, Joe is actually a Section 1 winner um, in his weight class, which was a very tough weight class in Section 1, and Joe did a tremendous job at the Section 1 tournament to win that. And Chris Morris, all league, all section. Those are all our winners. Thank you so much again for having. Me. Yeah, so uh, all of our athletes, please come up for a picture with our board.
Okay, the next is an incredibly important, this is the last budget presentation of this year. We are going to, the board will um, adopt the budget tonight, which is incredibly important. Uh, and on May 4th, there will be the, um, the public hearing where you can come and uh, ask, um, make comments. So I'm going to hand it over to Superintendent Tona, but I'm really excited because we have the murderer's row of administrators <laughs> who are going to present. And if you don't know what that reference is, it's an old Yankee hitters thing, but it's the murder. These are the best administrators in Putnam County. I'm, I'll go on record of saying that in northern Westchester or not. So I just turn it over to Superintendent uh, Tona. Thank you. Thank you, President DeLulo. And I agree. I haven't been here for that long, but I am, an, I am honored to work with the administrators in this district. They're terrific. So tonight we're going to present our fourth budget presentation, and that will include uh, our building administrators' presentations as well as a budget adoption this evening. So um, throughout the past several months, we've gone through the budget devel de development process. So you can see here highlighted for April 18th, um, these presentations this evening. And as President DeLulo said, May 4th is our budget hearing, and May 16th is the budget vote and trustee election. So we've shared over the past several months the budget priorities, and um, all of them are important. Tonight, we're really focusing on balancing the needs of our educational program with the fiscal needs of the community. And without further ado, I would like to invite our wonderful elementary administrative team to the podium. Thank you, Superintendent Tona and the board. Um, we are super excited to be here tonight to be able to share all the wonderful things that are happening at the elementary level, middle school level, and the high school level. Um, and we will tell our story through pictures. Um, we're going to start with Teachers College Reading and Writing Project. Um, this is an initiative that was unrolled four years ago and is one of our proudest ones because of the support of the board to be able to do this unroll in a way that was smart, that really provided the teachers with the materials that they needed, but also the professional development. We unrolled it with two grade levels at a time, K-1, then two, three, um, finally with four or five, and now it's actually middle school in grade six, and Mr. Kazakria will be talking about the continuation of that as we move forward. Um, even though that we are heading into year five of this unroll, there is still support that we need um, for our teachers. We're continuous learners, so we're looking to be able to support our teachers with additional coaches to be able to continue this work going on, along with looking at the materials, especially within classroom libraries. Our kids are constantly using the books, reading them every day, so we know there will be upkeep um, as we continue to move this forward to be able to replace books um, that are being used on a daily basis. And you'll see up front, um, middle, um, with our teachers, part of a PD um, experience that they just had a couple weeks ago to be able to know that this learning is ongoing for everyone. So we thank the board for your continuous support on this enrollment and we look for it to continue as it goes on in the middle school and continues in the elementary level. I now turn it over to Jen Pontillo, the principal of Lakeview, to be able to talk about our Reveal Math program. And I can just jump in and thank Mr. Gilligan, our principal of Boston Road Elementary School. Good evening, everybody. Um, so I am here to talk about Reveal Math. Um, this is a picture of um, some pictures from Family Math Night, um, which was a huge success, and others from Math in Action in Classrooms. This is 
um, our first year of implementing Reveal. Um, it certainly um, comes with its challenges, as does the first year of any new program, because it does make certain assumptions that you had the program last year. And so as teachers are um, teaching the units, um, it's kind of going under the premise that um, last year, when those students were in the grade prior, they received the scope and sequence according to the program, not according to the program that we used last year. So for year one, we did um, make a commitment to implement the program with fidelity, um, knowing that we will need to look at our own MAYAPAC scope and sequence for math, and that'll be some of the work that we're looking to do next year as we're making some adjustments, um, one, to the program, two, adding manipulatives, and three, looking at the scope and sequence with the help of the consultant um, that will kind of work with our math committee to take a deeper dive into it just to make sure um, that it is going you know, as successfully as it can um, using the information that we gained from this year. And now I turn it over to Michelle Tween who will talk about social emotional learning. Um, just um, as a little bit of background, we did have in from 2020 to 2021 that school year, we had a team of um, social workers and psychologists and myself attend ruler training uh, to implement social emotional learning as a framework. Um, we did that training and the following year, um, we really focused on introducing that um, social emotional learning piece to the teachers, the faculty and staff, um, administrators, and then that the 2021-22 the school year, we hired a school counselor for the elementary schools who traveled from building to building. She had a very tight schedule. Um, and we reworked that this year. So she again is traveling to all, thir all three buildings, but she's spending 13 weeks at a time at each building, which is very helpful. She gets kind of um, made a lot of connections. She is working through um, making sure that every student in the elementaries has access to the ruler framework, is exploring um, new social emotional language, emotional vocabulary, which is helping little people who had a really tough time, all of us had a really tough time during COVID, and the challenges that we all faced for that social emotional piece, making sure that that wellness is brought to the classrooms every single day. Um, and we started that with the teachers. Now we, are roll we continue to roll it out for the students uh, through lessons that are brought in by the counselor and the teachers now have started to adopt some of those lessons into their daily routines in classroom. Um, we do hope that with the budget we have um, further online access to the resources we are looking to make sure that we um, bring on the family engagement piece. So it's not just something that we're talking about at school, but the families have the language that we're using so that everybody is speaking a common language around social emotional learning. Um, and that is really, that will create better emotional, mental, and wellness around everything that we do at the elementary schools, all through the middle school and high school as well. Now I introduce Mr. Chadwick from uh, Home Road. Thank you, Michelle. So the two topics that I'm going to speak briefly about, the first one being STEAM, which is an educational, educational acronym for science, technology, engineering, art, and music. And currently, students in Mayapak Elementary Schools have been receiving instruction from Mimi Murphy for the past five years. And so moving forward into this budget cycle, what we've done is taken a couple of positions and what we're recommending is that we have a STEAM teacher in each of the three elementary schools so that the students, we, in theory, are getting three times the amount of, of STEAM instruction as they currently are, and we don't need to pack up materials and move from school to school to school over the course of the year, and that every teacher um, and every student would get triple the, the instruction and also have one person designated um, to deliver that structure in the building on a daily and weekly basis. The second thing is Science 21. Science 21, to give you a little background on that, 1996, when I was teaching fourth grade, there was a science, New York State science assessment. And so from 1996, 1996 until present day, that assessment has changed absolutely zero. And so what we are doing is planning for the future 
This is the first year since I've been in the field of education that fourth graders will not be taking a New York State Science Assessment. And we are in the preparation phase for this assessment, which will be in fifth grade beginning next year. It will be strictly computer-based testing. And part of the preparation that we're doing is the investigations, which are a number of hands-on um, labs slash experiments that need to happen in both third, fourth, and fifth grade um, so that all the students have the necessary experiences um, so that they are prepared for that assessment. Kind of like the number of seat minutes and lab minutes that you would need on the secondary level in order to sit for a Regents exam. I'm now going to turn it over to Mrs. Blessing. So, sorry. there we go. So, as you can see in the pictures on this slide, the libraries at Austin Road and Fulmer Road are currently go undergoing some construction and renovation as part of the capital project. The work that has been done so far is absolutely amazing. This just gives you a little sneak peek. Actually, there's actually more progress since these pictures have been added, but this is to just give you a little preview of what's to come. The new design of this space is going to provide our students and our staff with an environment where collaboration and exploration are at the forefront. The design includes an open floor plan, flexible seating, and also breakout rooms. With that being said, the addition of a library media specialist at Austin Road, a shared library media specialist at Austin Road and Fulmer Road are a central part of this budget. And um, we feel that the addition of this person, this teacher, will just be instrumental in the exploration, the collaboration, and just supporting our teachers in the area of curriculum design, technology, and of course, accessing the best books that our kids can have to support curriculum and also for enjoyment. Um, construction at Lakeview hasn't quite started yet, but it is planning to, we are planning to start that this summer, and we are currently getting ready for that. Um, just reading through our books, finding the books that we want to keep, and discarding the books that we no longer need that are probably 30 plus years old. Um, so that kind of just sums up our presentation. As you can see at the elementary level, we have a lot of great things going on in the areas of math, reading, ELA, um, social emotional learning, and then also our capital projects that are really going to just transform each of our schools to make them more modern and really exciting places to be. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you to our elementary team. And at this time, I'd like to invite Mr. Kozakria, middle school principal, to the podium. Thank you very much, Superintendent Tona and school board. Thank you, elementary uh, administrators. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit tonight about the middle school and the amazing things that are going on there at the middle school. Um, as a middle school administrator and anyone that works in the middle school, we know one of our main things is to bridge all three levels of education together, from the elementary to the middle to the high school. And um, a lot of the things that are going on at the middle school are now carrying over to, going on at the elementary schools, is now carrying over to the middle schools. The first of those is the Reader's Writer's Workshop. Uh, as Mr. Gilligan mentioned, it was started four years ago at the middle school, uh, at the elementary school, and is now carried over to the middle school this year. Uh, this was our first year of implementing it at uh, the middle school, starting with our sixth grade. Uh, our, our sixth grade. Uh, it was something that was thought about and talked about over the last few years and done in a very strategic way, as Mr. Gilligan said, um, really thought out um, on from the book ordering to how we, are go we were going to give professional development to our teachers, um, to how we were going to implement it to our students. Some of the pictures here, you can see uh, our teachers hard at work, not only throughout the school year, but coming in over the summer to prepare their libraries, to have a true understanding of what their lessons were. Um, it was helpful having it at the elementary school for the last several years. And it helped in the way that our students understood coming into the middle school uh, readers writers workshop and what exactly those lessons looked like. 
We're excited for next year in seventh, we'll be implementing it in the seventh grade next year. And we thought this was a really uh, strategic way to do it rather than just putting it in all three grades at one time, but instead doing it one grade level at a time, making sure our um, teachers understood it and our, our students also had a good understanding of the Reader's Writer's Workshop and some of the chains that were going to go on in their reading and writing courses. A second area that the middle school has been working on is our accelerated courses. In the middle school, we offer two uh, courses that end in a regions, and those are living environment and algebra. Um, due to some of the work being done at the elementary school and at the middle school, uh, we were looking at ways to give opportunity for our middle school students to take some of those courses. In the previous year, in our current eighth grade, there are 25% of our students that are taking algebra. Um, after taking a look of how can we increase that, being again strategic, thinking about how we, what's most important is that our students are successful. Um, we have raised the amount of students that are taking the accelerated course to 36%. That's an 11% increase um, of seventh graders that are taking that same accelerated course and will be able to take algebra uh, in the, uh, in the eighth grade next year. Uh, the third area that I'm gonna to touch on has to do with the STEAM program as uh, Ms. Blessing was talking about uh, earlier and, and the things that we're doing there. We have the Gateway program that is in the middle school at this time. And that's a program that is the middle school equivalent to Project Lead the Way, uh, Dr. Lawrence's program at the high school for engineering. Um, so by Implementing the Gateway program, it gave students some of those skills that when they get up to the high school and are able to uh, take the engineering courses. But we thought it was important, not only do we just uh, implement the Gateway program, but that we continue some of that traditional technology. Um, technology and STEAM have become such an important, vital part of our middle school um, that we do offer it to all three grade levels of our middle school, our sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, get it. And from some of the traditional things they do, like an egg drop, a, uh, a box oven, track cars, um, which are some of the pictures that you see over here, the bottom right being the track car, um, and learning some of the traditional working with woodwork, working with simple tools so that they can go home, they can work on some of the things that um, you can at a household. But not only that, but talking about some of the science, engineering, math skills that are so important for today. And some of those things that they're learning about are renewable energy. I don't know where we went. Renewable energy, micro bit and snap circuits, Tinkercad, designing homes using Tinkercad, and puzzle cubes using 3D printers. Would you like me to continue with it or just wait to see it get, get it going? Okay. There we go. All right. Savior's over here. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, so as I was saying, so melding the two of a traditional woodwork, using tools, working with tools, building things, using, making race cars, um, making some uh, egg drop, box ovens, and now not only that, but using our uh, STEAM technology, the information they're learning in elementary school, as uh, Mr. Chadwick said from Mimi Murphy, and now carrying it over to the science and engineering courses that we're doing at the middle school to do things like renewable energy, uh, micro bit and snap circuits, Tinkercad, designing homes using Tinkercad, which you can see over there, puzzle cubes, and the use of 3D printers. So uh, it's pretty amazing the wide range of 
things that our students are doing in their technology uh, classes. All right, so looking at the enhancements for the uh, budget this year and some things that we are looking forward to implementing at the middle school next year include the Reader's Writers Workshop, as I said, in the seventh grade uh, and bringing it up one more grade. Uh, and then a social worker. Um, Ms. Blessing touched on some of the, I actually, I'm sorry, um, touched on some of the social and emotional needs that, that the uh, children have had since coming back from COVID. And we do see a lot of that and do think it's really important um, having an extra social worker in the school um, and giving opportunities for uh, children to have a place to go to talk about some of those needs is really, really important. And then finally, um, some of the enhancements that are coming through the capital project. Uh, as we know, the capital project was voted on and passed uh, several years ago. The middle school got to see a great new parking lot out there um, where it could fit more cars. Uh, and cars can come in and out much more safely, as well as a beautiful turf field that is now over at the middle school. Our students are able to get out there for recess uh, a lot more often. Uh, a lot of the time it was often muddy out in that field and we couldn't really get them out even days after it rained. Now we try to get the kids out there as much as possible due to that uh, turf field. Some of the things that are gonna be going into the uh, middle school this year is our uh, beloved planetarium that if anyone that went through Mayapac uh, and, and went through Mayapac Middle School, that is generally the first thing they remember and the first memory they talk about. Um, and it has been uh, sad to tell them that it is no longer in use uh, and hasn't been for several years, but we are replacing that and making it a mini, mini theater for our, our students to go into. A place for uh, presentations, a place for uh, students to present, for presenters to come in and talk to small groups, uh, groups of about 80 students in all, which we are really, really excited for. Um, and if you've ever been into the middle school, it's certainly uh, an area that can be really, really useful for our students. Along with that, we are getting a new library media uh, room and moving a little bit away from that traditional library and getting a more that, uh, one that is more updated with, uh, in a media type of way and how students use a uh, library at this time. Along with that, we have a big STEAM lab that'll be put into, uh, into one of our rooms. And finally, uh, I think the kid, one the kids are most excited about, the cafeteria upgrades and new selections for meals from them. I know that got them the most excited. So we are really, really excited for these uh, upgrades and these things that are gonna go on in our building uh, throughout the summer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kazapriya. And now I'd like to invite Dr. Lawrence, our high school principal, to the podium. I do have them. Okay. Uh, board president, board vice president, Superintendent Tona, thanks for the invitation. Uh, always very, very excited and welcome to come and, and, and talk to you a little bit about what's going on at the high school. And in thinking about what to put together in terms of a budget presentation, uh, it, I'm like a kid in the candy store because there, there are so many things happening here at the high school um, to talk about and programs that we're putting in place and initiatives that we're putting in place. Um, I really struggled on what I was gonna highlight in five to seven minutes, um, but, the, the most important thing for me to, in, in terms of the lens that I'm looking at is programming is the heart of a stable school. Right? When, we talk about, when we talk about successful schools, programming and courses that are aligned are the center of, the, of our students' experience. And when we have these things in common, the students have these things in common and the teachers have them in common, it unifies the school building. So the presentation tonight is focused on things that we've been able to do thanks to the board support and the community support. Through, and most of the things I wanna talk about is celebrations of our students, celebrations of our, of our teachers as well, and things that we have coming up on the horizon. 
So, first and foremost, we've had MHS Life for quite some time now. Um, and one of the new additions that we had this year is that we were able to do a team building exercise at BOCES for our incoming ninth graders. Focused completely on unifying them uh, as, a, as a group, introducing them to the core values of Mayapak High School, and having them spend a lot of time with their MHS Life teachers. So the teachers that they would have in MHS Life ran the, ran the, um, the groups at BOCES. The students had a tremendous experience. Every time the students came back, there were three different groups. Uh, I personally met with them here and got their feedback about their experience and quizzed them on how they were implementing the core values of the high school during their time at BOCES. And it was really a great kickoff to the school year. So we're really happy to have that addition at the start of this school year. So that's the second phase of our, our MHS Life program. The third phase right now is that we're, we're all year long, the Climate Committee has been working on a grade nine mentorship program. So that is in progress. We're, we're hoping to have a model to put forward for this coming school year. Um, not a full scale model, um, but, but a trial model for us to see the, the, you know, the kinks and the things that we need to work on. But again, the focus would be for our incoming ninth graders to have a, a, a faculty mentor um, throughout, their, throughout their ninth grade experience. So very, very exciting, and I think it's important to support our, our ninth graders, obviously, as they, as they come up. We had uh, many opportunities this year, um, and it's one of the great things about, about the high school is we're, we're, it's the culminating event for, for the district. And the students are well prepared to be our voice at the high school. And they've done an amazing job in doing various presentations. They, if you remember, our PLTW, our engineering group, did a, did a presentation of our new engineering space for you. Amazingly eloquent and very, very detailed. And I think they gave you gifts as well, um, which was tremendous. Um, we had a, 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 new, a new initiative this year because our, our parents didn't get a chance to see the renovations that were done during the bond you know, because, of, because of the obvious closure. So we put together a MHS parent tours, completely student run. Uh, we had about 40, 45 people show up, um, parents and prospective students, middle school students, and some students that are going to private schools that are considering coming to Mayapak High School. Broke them up into groups, and our students led them around the, sc the school building to the various uh, areas that were renovated, where they were met by their fellow students. M most of them were honor society students in, in that in that, um, in that core subject, and the students, the Honor Society students explained the impact of the renovations in the science classrooms, uh, in the engineering space, in the library media space, in the music space, um, perform, in the music area, they, they performed um, um, some, some songs for, for the visitors. Uh, they just did an amazing job, and, and as principal, it's, a, it's Great to watch our students take ownership of this building, ownership of their experience, and just be so, just be so eloquent about it and specific about it and genuine, genuinely explain the impact of the programming here at the high school um, for them personally and as they are, are thinking about the future. A couple other program highlights. We had the honor of having our WISE program come and present to you. Uh, which is a, a huge program here at the high school, as you know. Um, and I already mentioned our PLTW presentation. Some of our student celebrations, again, are, it's the, 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 the culminating event for our kids. And in, in specifically in science and in music, there are county, state, and national platforms for them to put themselves out there. Our science research and our, our musicians, every single year, make a huge splash, and we should be very proud of it. This year, we had eight of our MHS musicians named to area Allstate. That means the best in Putnam Northern Westchester. We had three of our high school students named Conference Allstate, which means best in New York State. And we actually had one of our musicians who presented to the New York State Band Directors Conference. So uh, the Band Directors Conference is a professional development opportunity for teachers, and one of our students presented to the teachers at that conference. So, Again, um, a testament to the programming here. Our science students every single year present amazingly well at the various um, sci the science competitions. 
the uh, Regeneron High School Mentorship Program. We have one student win that six-week full-time internship. The uh, Eastern Junior Science Humanities Symposium, three of our students were given that award. Nine of our students got the WISEF Award winners. Eight of our nine students won awards for a total of nine awards during that competition. That, the WISEF is the, the, the biggest science competition in, in, in Westchester, Putnam Northern Westchester. Um, to have nine of our students walk away with awards is a huge, huge accomplishment. Four of our students selected for STEM-related New York State scholarships. And switching over to the college board, two of our students were um, named nationally commended students. Again, all as, as a result of every, all the great stuff happening here and the support of the board and our, our budgets. Some of the celebrations of our teachers, which is always great to point out. We had two of our teachers named New York State Master Teachers this year. Kelly Posh, who's one of our math teachers, and Jen Cothers, one of our science teachers. And two more of our teachers have applied to the New York State Master Teacher Program. Just speaks to the, to the professionalism, the drive, the focus of our instructional staff here. So I know, I know when I went to high school, um, you, you kind of just got your courses, right? What's that phrase you, you, you get? What, you, what was that? You get what you get and you don't get upset. Um, and modern day high schools have the ability and are encouraged to offer programming where our students can have themed transcripts, themed resumes as they move through their high school experience. It's amazingly powerful. Uh, when our students are able to have a theme, to show a theme to uh, a college admissions office in their transcript. So, so just to point out a couple of our pathways and our themes, obviously our engineering program. 60 of our students over the last three years have gone into the, um, have declared engineering as a major. We have Project Risk Taker, which is a, a very advanced program uh, offered for, our, um, for a select group of 10th graders. Um, the students travel as a cohort. They take Algebra II honors. They take college um, engineering and honors physics for engineering. They have the same teachers. They travel as a cohort, as I, I explained. Um, and the teachers actually co-teach in the classroom. So the students get the opportunity and the experience to see how these disciplines are all interrelated, math, science, and then the production phase in engineering. Again, through the support of the board and the community and our budget, um, these, this program is possible and it's been outstanding. It's our, our second year of it now. This coming school year, we're adding a fifth course for, into our business track, business calculus. Obviously, we're gonna continue our WISE internships. Every single one of our cores, our world languages and arts have National Honor Society accreditation. That's a big deal. Again, the, these accreditations, the ability to have these honor societies, all help our students to theme their resumes and theme their transcripts for when they apply to colleges. So things to come um, as we're looking forward to next school year, the intent of impact, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna go too deeply, but one of the, the guiding principles of the decision making for the administrative team and our department chair, chairs um, is centered around the research of John Hattie. And John, John Hattie is an educational researcher who, well, I'm not gonna go too deeply, but talks about the, the variables that impact student learning. Um, and one of them, the primary, the primary impactor is the actual intent of the teacher when the teacher walks into the room uh, and the intent of the student sitting there. But it applies to the administration and educational leadership. So everything that, we have, that we've done over the last six years has been focused on an intent. What is it that we're trying to accomplish, right? So we're trying, for the, for the next school year, in recognizing now a second very popular major that our students are going into, 
being the field of education, we have 85 students over the last three years declare a major in education. A huge testament, again, to their experience here at the Mayapac schools, um, their interactions with their teachers, the programming that they receive. So we're looking to add a pathway for, for students um, that would, again, help them theme their transcript if they're looking to, to declare a major in education, increase student interest in the field, uh, and affect their programming, and prepare them for the WISE internship. So we're looking at moving into um, or creating a human behavior, a child development course for education. And that will be, as the discussions are happening now, for 10th graders. A course called Topics in English Composition, social, um, or, in, or Topics in Social Studies, backed with instructional methodologies. So the idea there, and all of us who have been, been through an educational program, you typically get a topics of course, right, where you have to um, devise instructional methodologies to relay that, to relay that content. So we're, we're putting together a course that would mimic that college course to give, that stu to give the students an, an opportunity to experience what that is like. Um, and then obviously we have all of our students who move into wise internships in the field of education. So again, the intent of impact is to foster our students' interest in the field of education to prepare more educators uh, for the future and to give them this opportunity and this pathway. We're pretty excited about it. Again, intent of impact to increase elective offerings, decrease study halls, and build in an AIS uh, for math and English for our incoming ninth graders. So this coming school year, the, and the scheduling is already underway, um, our ninth graders will have now two English electives, three social studies electives, and one math elective that they haven't had in previous years. So this coming, in, in coming ninth, grade, ninth grade class is going to have an opportunity to pick up another credit in their freshman year. More choices for them. And we also want to support our incoming ninth graders who are not, not as successful as they, they could have been maybe. Um, in eighth grade math or eighth grade uh, ELA. So for our students who were not successful in grade eight math or ELA, they're going to be automatically enrolled in what we're calling a fundamentals of course. So fundamentals of math, fundamentals of English, in addition to their core math class. So their core algebra class and their ninth grade English um, to offer further support to help them be more successful as they move forward. And if we have some students who weren't successful in, in either um, math or English, um, we're, going, we're going to give them both fundamentals of math, fundamentals of English, and we're just gonna have to do some creative scheduling, offering the math opposite the science labs. And I know all of you have seen this, and I'm not gonna go over every little bit of it, but I, it's just so important, and um, we as, as as the educational community here, um, K through 12, ought, ought to take some time to look at it and be amazingly proud, um, feel very fortunate that our students are able to meet this level of success uh, year after year after year. The primary reason, obviously, um, comes from the families that we serve, their focus on education, uh, our great instructional staff, our wonderful students, and the support of the community and the board in, in helping us with get the items in the budget that we need to make all of these things possible. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Dr. Lawrence, and thank you to all of our administrators that are here with us this evening. Um, like they demonstrated tonight, we, we have so many wonderful programs to offer throughout the district, and this budget will only enhance them and provide additional opportunities for our students. So we're very excited about the possibilities ahead. So um, this slide shows budget highlights in curriculum and instruction, of which many were mentioned this evening. Um, the next slide talks about special education and student support highlights in the budget, including uh, additional content special classes at the high school in uh, content areas. Uh, Mr. Kozakria mentioned a social worker at the middle school an additional 812 elementary class, 
a board certified behavior analyst, a transition counselor, which is uh, very much needed for our uh, high school age students in special education as they move out of the high school and beyond. So we're looking to fund that position through a federal grant. And we'd like to expand Unified Athletics. Currently, we have a basketball program, and we'd like to expand that to include bowling, which will provide additional opportunities for our special needs students. And some highlights in athletics, facilities, and transportation. Athletics, we're looking to uh, create a girls ice hockey and a boys swim program through mergers with other districts. An assistant coach for field hockey and girls volleyball because their numbers have increased based on interest. Looking at facilities, there's quite a few um, items included in the budget, many of which will be, uh, the work will be done in-house because we have such a talented buildings and ground staff. Um, some that would be, would require us to go with outside vendors include uh, looking at our high school gymnasium floor, doing a sand and refinish, and abatement and flooring replacement of various classrooms throughout the district. In transportation, an additional bus garage lift because we maintain our own fleet and an additional transportation dispatcher so that we have coverage in uh, dispatch so people can communicate with the transportation office throughout the entire day. Uh, you've heard me speak about in previous presentations about our administration restructure, which is technically budget neutral. So those um, positions include the renaming of our assistant superintendent for business to the assistant superintendent for finance and operations. Currently we have our interim assistant superintendent here with us and we're in the process of hiring a permanent assistant superintendent for the 23-24 school year. A director of special education. Last year we had uh, an additional assistant superintendent for pupil personnel services and technology. When that person left the district, it was not replaced this year. Instead, we brought on an interim director of special education. That's Ms. Gatto, she'll be with us next year as well. Um, but that is a new line of director of special education in the budget. We're looking to reconfigure our um, other administrators that support special ed. So we're looking to include an assistant director for special education. And we currently have two administrators for special education, one in elementary and one in secondary. Uh, as I mentioned, the assistant superintendent for pupil personnel and technology, that was a big job that oversaw two very large departments. So with uh, not replacing that position, we're looking to add a director of technology. We are also looking to eliminate a contract consultant that will help us uh, fund that position. We have a K-12 administrator currently, and that individual is going to become our administrator for safety, security, and compliance. We think it's very necessary to have a point person that will pull all of our safety resource personnel together, be a point of contact for um, all of us in the district along and with uh, our outside agencies that support us between Putnam County Sheriff's Office and Town of Carmel Police Department and a dedicated assistant principal at each elementary school. Currently, uh, you saw Dr. Tween and Mrs. Blessing this evening, and Dr. Tween is at Austin Road, and Mrs. Blessing is shared between Fulmer Road and Lakeview. So we are looking to have a third assistant principal so that each of our elementary schools have a dedicated one. And this slide I showed, uh, I think, in our second uh, budget presentation, first or second budget presentation, shows the dollar amount of our most recent positions on the left and our plan for the 23-24 school year. And you can see, in essence, it's budget neutral. And as we looked at this even deeper, we realized there's probably a savings here because the positions on the left, if those positions were to continue to next year, they would have contractual increases, which would bring their projected costs higher than what our projected cost is in the budget right now on the right. And then this slide you've seen before, but this is updated to include our March 31st enrollment numbers. So district-wide, we're projecting a decrease of 46 students. But when you look at them across the buildings and then across grade levels, 46 students is not enough to really see any um, personnel savings there because the students are on all different grade levels. So the next slide shows, currently we have 76 sections in our elementary schools uh, between general ed classes and our integrated co-teaching classes. And we are projecting the same number of sections for next year. So no increase and no decrease. 
Now, as we look at the budget, you can see our proposed expenditures in this pie chart here. And just about 80% of the expenses in the budget are towards salary and benefits. And that's typical in all school districts because in order to educate students, you need people to do that work and to support our students. So the, the bulk of our budget is in salaries and benefits. And here you see a budget summary um, based on that pie chart, but now you see a little more detail. You see the dollar amount budget for the current year as well as the 23-24 school year and the difference in each. So we are looking, we're proposing a $137,960,937 budget, which is an increase of almost $5.5 million. And the budget components, there are three components that the state requires all school districts to share with the public, an administrative component, a program component, and a capital component. And you can see in the yellow what is included in each of those components. So in the administrative component, that includes administrative salaries and benefits, any related office staffing to support those administrators, Board of Education expenses. The Board of Education are all here as volunteers, but there are expenses that go with uh, holding meetings, um, as well as legal expenses, auditing expenses, insurance, our BOCES administrative and capital expenses, and data processing costs. All of that falls under administration, administrative component. The program component is our instruction. So that includes instructional salaries and benefits, materials and supplies, guidance, health services, BOCES programs, interscholastic sports, extracurricular programs, and transportation. So basically that program component is everything involved with our students. And that's why when you see the three components, program is the largest. And the third component is capital, and that includes our facilities, maintenance and operations, any transfer to capital, and any debt service payments. So this next slide, we look at our proposed revenue, the money that we're taking in to support the budget. So um, the largest part of the pie is the property tax levy at 68.7% of all of our revenues. And then state aid is next at 26.9% of revenue. And then here you see the actual dollar amounts that um, make up that $137,960,937 budget. So you could see the increase in uh, state aid, the increase in the property tax levy, and all of the other categories that provide revenue to us so that we can fund the entire school budget. And this slide you've seen before, this is our projected state aid amounts as well as our current state aid amounts. So the uh, second column, after you have all of the different categories of aid that come in with our state aid numbers, the next column shows our current state aid budget. And the middle column there is our governor's projection. And the last column is our state aid projection. And some of those numbers are not exactly the same as the governor's proposal. We do a conservative estimate because some of the lines, the governor provides us with a projection, but it's actually based on usage. So we don't know our usage until the school year ends, and we don't want to get into the next school year and then find out that we didn't use everything that was budgeted in that particular area, and we won't get all of the state aid that's due to us, and then we would have a budget shortfall. So we budget conservatively on the state aid to avoid being, uh, to, to facing any shortfall in the future. So if you look, there's two uh, rows at the bottom, total aid and total aid less pre-K. So we're using the total aid less pre-K numbers. Um, Pre-K is something that the state provides state aid on for a universal pre-K program. And here in Mohopak, we have not had a universal pre-K program in the past uh, or in the recent past. And so we are looking to explore that for the 24-25 school year. So there's a lot of steps that have to go uh, into play before we can make that a reality, but we are looking into that in the next school year for implementation in 24-25. This slide shows our different reserves. So um, school districts are allowed to put money in reserve in case it's needed in the future. It's um, important to have these reserves so if something um, unforeseen should happen, for example, if we look at teachers' retirement system or employees' retirement system, if 
those costs should project higher at some point in the future, we could pull from those reserves for that specific purpose to help us in the budgeting process. I just want to um, mention the third line, reserve for tax reduction. We are going to be applying $182,134 from that reserve as part of our, our appropriated fund balance usage, which helps us in the revenue category to meet the expenses of our school budget. And I also want to point out the reserve for the tax tertiary at the very bottom is at almost seven and a half million dollars. And that is strategic because we do know that there is an issue um, with the reservoirs within our school district that there may be um, some tax liabilities placed upon the district in the next couple of years. And this tax tertiary reserve will be able to help us meet those liabilities should they come to fruition in the next couple of years. And this slide is the formula to determine the tax levy limit. So the limit is actually 3.71%. So we could go out to the community, the board could adopt a budget with a 3.71 tax, tax levy increase. That is not what we're looking at, but that is the, the highest amount that the board could adopt. And then this slide shows us the proposed budget of $137,960,937 which is a budget to budget increase of 4.15%. And there you can see the tax levy at a 2.81% tax levy. So that is much less than the 3.71% which we are allowed to levy. And um, it's actually $836,478 less than the maximum levy that's allowable. And here you see a budget and tax levy history over the past five years. So I'd like you to uh, take notice of the second column on consumer price index. I thought that was interesting. When you look back at 2019-20, 2020-21, and 21-22 school years, CPI was quite much, very much lower than it is now. And those budget to budget increases in the fourth column were also quite low. Where if you look at the current school year, 4.7 was the CPI last year, and it's 8% right now, and our budget to budget increases are higher, and that makes sense. Just like at home, when we open up our electric bills, uh, we see that there's increases, the oil bills, there's increases because of, the, of CPI um, and the state of the economy. So a lot of the school budget expenses also have increases this year that are higher than in other years. So you can see uh, the second to the last column, our actual tax levy amount, and the column before that, what the allowable amount was. So we have um, in three of the five years where we've levied less than the allowable amount, and the other two years at the exact allowable levy limit, which was uh, a lower uh, allowable amount than this current year. And then the last column shows the difference. So that's the amount of money that was not levied to the residents in the community. Can you just spend another half a, half a minute on the last line? So, so, so well, I, I just want to point out, we're asking the community for 2.81. CPI is at 8. The budget percentage that has gone up is 4.5, which is under CPI, and we are almost, what was it, $800,000 under the allowable limit. So I just want to point that out. So if you actually graph this out, you can see what a tremendous saving, well, it's just a lot less than we, than we could have gone up to, but a lot, very much a lot less than the CPI. All right, thank you. Thank you. And, and we didn't propose anything higher than that 2.81% because when we got the input from all of our administrators when we were creating the budget, we were able to create a budget that met the needs of the school district, provided opportunities for the students at a levy that was less than the allowable. So we were very mindful of trying to provide our students with everything possible and um, also mindful of, of where we are uh, financially with the community. So this slide shows the estimated tax levy impact, um, both monthly and annually. And again, this is an estimate um, in the town of Carmel, with the current um, proposed budget, we're looking at a $24.40 per month increase in taxes for the 
residents of the town of Putt Valley at $24.41. So these estimates, we work with the assessor's office in both of those towns. We get the information from them. And they've indicated that these assessments will be changing. Final tax rates will be, won't be determined until August. So these are estimates. And we also have to be mindful that the board recently adopted exemptions for increased exemptions for our veterans, for our senior citizens and persons with disabilities, and in instituted um, the exemption for our volunteer firefighters and ambulance workers. So the town does not have that information for us yet. Um, so we will have that for the fall um, when we're actually uh, determining the final levy on, on all of the residents. And we have to include a slide about an, a contingency budget. Should the budget fail and we need to go to contingency, we would only be able to levy the exact tax levy that's levied in 22-23. So we would have to reduce the proposed budget by $2,589,662. And in a contingent budget, you can see there the areas listed that will be looked at um, in order to make that more than two and a half million dollar reduction. There will also be a separate proposition on the ballot for additional, uh, for the purchase of additional buses for our students for transportation. So we're looking at eight 65 passenger buses that have air conditioning at a cost of $160,607 each. And we're looking to continue our bus replacement plan. We've replaced 40 buses so far since we've put that plan in place. And um, we keep our buses on the road. They, they have an average of 80,000 miles and over 10 years of service. So it's smart budgeting to have a plan in place where we can replace buses on a regular basis so that we don't find ourselves in a position where our entire fleet needs to be uh, updated all at once because that would be a huge, huge uh, cost implication. So how does this budget benefit our students? You can see here, and from our conversations this evening with our administrators, we're looking to expand our commitment to STEAM education for our students from kindergarten through 12th grade. We're supporting mental health, providing a social worker at the middle school, very much needed. We're continuing to provide our students with outstanding opportunities in art, music, extracurricular activities, and athletics. We're looking to provide a library media specialist at the elementary level. Um, to support our brand new library media centers that we're very excited about. And we're continuing our commitment to transportation safety through the purchase of additional buses as part of a, a replacement plan. So next steps, May 4th is our budget hearing. Um, May 20, throughout May and actually starting tomorrow, um, I'll be presenting the budget at PTO meetings, faculty meetings, and different community organizations throughout the district. And on May 16th, the budget vote and trustee election is at here at the high school from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. If you'll be away on May 16th, this slide talks about where you can go to get an absentee ballot. And then the Board of Education trustee election. There are three vacancies on the Board of Education. And the following, the candidates listed on the slide will appear on the ballot. And three of those candidates the ones receiving the highest number of votes will serve three-year terms beginning with the 2023-2024 school year. All right, Board of Education, do you have any questions? All right, thank you. Thank you. And again, I want to thank the, uh, the administrators for coming out uh, to show us. I, I think it's great that we did this, and we should have you guys no joke here. So you guys come out and talk about your uh, your buildings and your programs um, more than once a year. So thanks again, and, and thanks to Ms. Tona for talking for about 30 minutes straight here. So thank you. All right, so moving on. Um, uh, next is communications, comments on the agenda items. Uh, Ms. LaRocca, I don't think we have any, correct? No, we don't. Okay, so now we're going to go to the finance portion, I'm going to um, motion to accept a bunch of reports. Uh, does anyone, before I do that, does anybody have any questions before I do that or comments? No. Yes? Anybody? Okay. Motion to accept 
Um, I should, I'm going to do them separately. All right. Motion to, let me do them all in one shot. You can't do that. Okay. Thank you. Motion to accept the treasurer's report February 2023. Second, please. All in favor? Motion to accept the warrants February 2023. Second, please. All in favor? Motion to accept revenue report reports uh, February 2023. Second, please. All in favor? Uh, motion to accept the uh, budget transfers February 2023. Second, please. All in favor? Motion to accept claims audit report February 2023. All uh, sorry. Second, please. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Work session minutes. These are the minutes from last uh, month. Uh, motion to accept the work session minutes of March 16, 2023. Second, please. All in favor? Motion to accept the regular minutes of March 21st, 2023. Second, please. All in favor? Thank you. All right. Now I get to talk for a minute, and now we go back to Ms. Tona with the superintendent report. Thank you, President Tolulo. So uh, you may have heard that today the State Board of Regents voted unanimously to ban the use of Native American mascots, team names, and logos in public schools during its morning session today in Albany. So a document has been released with items shared during the public comment period that was uh, started the end of December, ran for two months. Um, and each of those public comments are uh, outlined in this document with responses from the Board of Regents. Ultimately, each of those comments from, and responses from the Board of Regents say, no changes to the proposed rule are necessary. So I would like to thank the many community members who contributed public comments because the document does mention Mahopak quite a few times that multiple Mahopak residents express sentiments. So um, I'll get that document up on the website if anyone wants to look at it, but you can also find it through the New York State Education Department. Um, if you put in April mascot, it pro it'll probably come up in a search. Um, so several items from the document include um, they talked about the appropriateness of, of logos that contain a feather and that it should be evaluated in context. Um, they're just saying that when school districts had a, an indigenous logo and mascot already, that it's, in their opinion, it's difficult for um, us to continue with any uh, Native American imagery. And the department is not anticipating that any team names, logos, or mascots that contain vestiges of prohibited team names, logos, or mascots will be considered acceptable. They also, um, something that they added was that they do not recommend the destruction or altercation of historical artifacts such as photographs, trophies, or banners. So um, that's encouraging that we can keep uh, some of our history alive. And the intent of the regulation is, and this, I'm reading this all from the state's document, the intent of the regulation is not to pretend that indigenous mascots were never used, but to eliminate their use going forward. So um, that sounds encouraging that we have a lot of uh, artifacts for things that we're proud of from, from years past that we can still uh, keep those on display. With respect to extensions of time, so the, the state has already said that districts have to, the boards have to adopt uh, a resolution to change the mascot by June 30th of 2023, but that districts have until June 30th of 2025 to make all of the changes um, around the district to, to remove items that need to be removed or changed. But they did add that with respect to extensions of time, school districts can request an extension of deadlines uh, based upon a showing of good cause. So school districts that require additional time may utilize this process. I can't guarantee that it would be approved, but it does give us an option to request additional time if that's needed. Uh, the state says that additional guidance will be forthcoming with more specifics. Um, but we do have a wonderful committee that is made up of students as well as community members 
Yesterday, we met our second committee meeting, so we are making progress in uh, narrowing down mascot choices based on input from the community. Each of the community members have been encouraged to go out and talk to family, uh, friends, neighbors that are in the district to get input. And um, we're looking to narrow the choices down to three so that our students on May 16th during the school day will be able to uh, vote on those three options. So we're very focused on coming up with potential mascots and rationale to go with it so that when we present to the students and the community, the committee has provided a reason for why that mascot was selected. So um, at the May meeting, we, the budget vote is the evening or the day of May 16th. On May 17th, we have a work session with the Board of Education and the regular meeting is on Thursday, May 18th. And student members of the mascot selection committee will present to the Board of Education on May 18th. And then the Board of Education, I believe you want to take an additional month and, and deliberate and think about it. And then um, the resolution would have to be on the agenda for the June meeting. Upcoming events that are not mascot related include the High School Spring Musical of Shrek on April 27th, 28th, and 29th. So I'm looking forward to that. And um, our students in grades three through eight will be taking their English Language Arts Assessment, New York State Assessment Program, this week, and their math assessment during the first week of May. Letters have gone home to families with specific information. And this Friday evening is the high school junior prom. So we wish all of our junior students a, a wonderful evening. And tonight in our audience, I'd like to welcome Jeffrey Cole, who's on the agenda this evening as our new Assistant Director for Special Education. So welcome, Mr. Cole. Thank you. OK. All right. So next is uh, the committee reports. As I've said many times, we have um, committees going on during the month, and we're, we'll read out the reports. The first one is the HR committee, so I turn over to VP, our v Vice President, Adam Savino, for that report. Thank you, President DeLillo. Good evening, everyone. Uh, the HR committee met on April 11th uh, from 6.30 till about 8 o'clock. Present were myself, Trustee Masafra, President DeLillo, Superintendent Tona, and Assistant Superintendent for uh, Human Resources, Ms. Legato. Uh, we discussed, the uh, majority was on Human Resources agenda. Um, as Ms. Tona mentioned, one of our uh, newest uh, hires is in the audience tonight uh, to be uh, voted on later, or to be brought up later. Uh, we discussed numerous um, resignations, um, and we also went over the current openings in the district office as well as um, it, the administrative team. That's pretty much went over. Um, the details are contained on the, the agenda for tonight. That can be discussed in public. So with that, I'll turn it back to President Dulula. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Adam. OK, next is uh, uh, Finance Committee. With that, I'll turn, over, turn it over to Trustee Jonathan Schneider. Jonathan, if you could give us a report. The Finance Committee met um, April 9th at 6 p.m. in the district office. Present were um, Trustees Schneider, Masafra, Savino, DeLulo, as well as Superintendent Tona and the interim super, Assistant Superintendent of Business, Howe. Uh, no others were present. We began with a budget presentation. The committee reviewed the superintendent's budget and as it was presented today. Uh, we did a line-by-line -line budget review where the committee was provided the opportunity to review the budget uh, with backup available. Uh, Assistant Superintendent Howe, as well as Superintendent Tona, were able to answer all questions and concerns presented at that time. And the um, recommendation is that it was moved forward here to the board for a vote for approval tonight. Uh, reviewed the claims, warrants, and treasurer's reports through the um, committee, and those reports were placed on the agenda for our voting meeting tonight. We closed the meeting at 8.35 p.m. and the next committee meeting will be May 11th, 2023 at 6 p.m. at the district office. Thank you very much. Okay, next is policy. With that, we'll turn it over to Senior Trustee, Ms. Lucy Misafra. 
Good evening, everyone. Uh, the policy committee met on March 23rd, and in attendance was myself as chair of policy, trustees uh, President Ben DeLulo, Vice President Adam Savino, and trustee Tana McCracken. In addition was Superintendent Christine Tona, and Assistant Superintendent Mike Trombley, and our district clerk, Melody LaRocca. Um, some of the things that we just discussed that evening, we reviewed policy 3420, which has to do with the nomination and the election of our board office officers. Uh, we had several discussions regarding the process and Trustee Tanner McCracken recommended a policy that would incorporate the president and vice president process when they are nominated at the reorg meeting in July. Um, at present was our attorney and he was concerned that there were some language in there that if someone nominated was not present that they needed to make some changes. Um, the process of the selection was further discussed and language provided uh, was discussed and the first reading is on tonight's uh, consent agenda. The second thing that we did talk about was uh, board member configuration. Our board president, Ben DeLulo, brought recommendations to the committee regarding a reduction in board members from nine to seven. It was discussed that perhaps a board of seven members would incorporate more effective and more efficient meetings. Uh, the committee had different insights and felt that a limit of chances of field experts Decrease in numbers, marginalized opinions, and the next step was for the uh, board president to present this to the full board, which was at our work session last Thursday. Uh, another item we reviewed was the uh, review of the federal law on obscenity. And this was a question to our attorneys pertaining to library material. And the attorneys assured us that uh, the law does not uh, uh, pertain to these uh, book library material. Another policy we discussed was res residency policy requirements. We discussed our policies regarding residency. Uh, NISBA has a policy, and next month we were going to review it accordingly. More to come on that. Uh, then we also reviewed former policy 1510, which is regular board meetings and rules. Uh, we will be reviewing this policy and determine what is local and what is required regulation and provide committee with more information at the next policy meeting. Uh, we close at 8.39 that evening and our next meeting is on April 27th at 7.30 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Masafra, very thorough. Uh, we did not have a ad hoc meeting um, uh, since our last uh, Board meeting, so uh, we don't have a report there. Trustee McCracken wants to send his uh, apologies for not being here. He is hard at work trying to get the budget passed. If you're t if you're paying attention, the budget will not likely be passed this week. They're still hard at work, and there's some still stumbling stumbling blocks. And uh, Tanner gave me an update about the uh, the uh, free lunch that is gaining momentum, and may get may get some may get finally finally passed. But just keep tuned in. Uh, to that. So thank you everybody for the uh, updates. All right, next is a donation. Once in a while we get donations. I'm going to call on uh, Vice President Adam Savino to tell us about uh, the donation. Be resolved upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education, hereby accepts the March 30th anniversary donation from AAA Carding for $1,500 to be used by the Lakeview Elementary School PTO. I offer this in the form of a motion. Uh, can I get a motion? That's a motion. Second. Oh, that's the motion. I, all right, I'll second it. Why not? I never get to do it. You can't go all in favor. You get a vote. OK, all in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. To, uh, a, 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 oh, ben. I did. I don't, I don't usually get to do it. All right, um, now. Uh, drum roll, please. We're going to move on to the, the motion to approve uh, the budget. I'm going to ask for a motion, and then I'm going to also ask if anybody has, if anyone has any commentary. So can I get a motion to approve the budget? And I'll read it. Uh, let, me read it now. Yep, let me read it. Res resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools that the Board of Education does hereby approve of the budget for the 20... 23-2024 school year in the amount of $137,960,937. Can I get a motion to approve? 
Does anyone have any questions, any comments? Can we do a roll call? Yeah, yeah, we can do that. But okay. does anyone want to say anything? I've already said. All right, so let's do a roll call. Second, please. All right, let's do a roll call vote, please. Let's go, tell you what, let's start. I usually start on that. Uh, Jonathan, why don't you go first? Uh, yes. All right, Ms. Masafa. Uh, so I just want to say, as we approve the budget tonight, um, I am a member of the Finance Committee. And the Finance Committee, as uh, Trustee Schneider said, we thoroughly reviewed each line of this budget. We started at a tax levy of 3.71, and when many discussions came down to the 2.81 tax levy. I wish we could have found additional savings, but we were informed by our administrators to continue programs and keep class sizes as is that this was a solid budget. At this time, I am approving this budget, but now it is up to the community to decide when everyone votes on May 16th. Thank you. Thank you. Adam? Yes. Can I vote yes? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Melody? Does... All right, motion carries, very good. Okay, second is the motion, can I get a motion to approve the bus propo proposition for 2023-2024 school year? Uh, second? second. Oh, uh, let's do a roll call. Okay, let's start on this side, please, uh, Trustee Martinez. Yes. Yes. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'll tell you what, I'm sorry. Let me read it first. Oh, I got to do my job here. It's gonna get the big bucks. Uh, resolved that the Board of Education of the Mayapak Central School District is hereby authoriz authorized to purchase various school buses, vehicles, and related equipment by, for use by the district and to expend their, thereof, including preliminary costs and costs incidental thereto, and to the financing thereof, an amount not to exceed the estimated total cost of 1300000 B, that a tax is hereby voted in the aggregate amount of not to exceed $1,300,000 to pay such costs, said tax to be levied and collected in installments in such years and in such amounts as shall be determined by said Board of Education. And C, that in, uh, participation of, in anticipation of said tax, bonds of the district are hereby authorized to be issued in the principal amount of not to exceed $1,300,000 in a tax is hereby voted to pay the interest on said bonds as the same shall become due and payable. Can I get a motion to approve? To approve. All right, Dave, can you just say? All right, motion is read. Can I get a second? All right, Trustee Martinez? Yes. Yes. Yes, for the safety of students. Yes. Motion carries, outstanding. All right, next is the uh, property tax report card. This is a requirement of the state education department and uh, we have to approve it as well. So can I get a motion? Let me, let me read it, here we go. Uh, resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools that Board of Education does hereby approve the Mayapak Central School District 2023-24 property tax report card as per attached, it is attached to the, um, the uh, um, online if you want to look at it. And it basically gives the details that we've been presenting for the last three months, three or four months. So can I get a motion to approve? Second. Uh, let's, let's do a roll call on this one too. Uh, Jonathan, why don't you start on that? Yes. All right, okay, I think that, uh, there you go, motion carried. Okay, next on the agenda is consent agenda, thank you. All right, so can I get a motion to accept the consent agenda? All right, second please. Okay, we're good there. All in favor? Aye. All right, now we're gonna to move to resident comments. Uh, Ms. LaRocca, are there any residents who have signed up? Yes. Okay. Is, is it here? 
Oh, okay, yes, I'm sorry. I'm not on my game here. Here, before public comment is opened up, we ask, there's a policy that's in place. Bottom line is, you, you have to be, you have to be professional in the sense that there's public decorum here. You address me or the board, you're not presenting to the crowd. Uh, no obscene language, libelous statements, threats of violence, statements advocating racial, religious, or other forms of prejudice will not be tolerated. Comments and questions should be made in a respectful manner. The board president will cut off comments deemed to be derogatory, inflammatory, inappropriate, and out of order. Personal attacks or criticism of any person connected with the district will not be permitted. Um, and now open the floor for public commentary. Good evening. Um, first, I'd like to thank the board um, and our administrators here for all you do, Superintendent. Um, I know we all want what's best for our kids. Um, I wouldn't normally come here to speak, but my daughter, who attends Austin Road, she uh, brought a concern to me, and uh, I felt the need to take action, at least show my face. So, uh, da -da -da. sorry. So my daughter wanted, um, my fifth grade daughter wanted, bought a book about cats called Starting from Scratch. So here, not that you can really see it, but it's a very cute looking cat book. And uh, it's actually nothing about cats. It's more about step families and gender identity. Trustees, after I read it, I emailed all of you and the superintendent. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I emailed all of you and the superintendent, and I received a uh, response from Trustee McCracken and uh, District Clerk uh, Laraca. Additionally, my wife and I have been in contact with Principal Gilligan and the head of the book fair, who have been extremely understanding and helpful. We received replacement books, and the first book that I looked up, which is another cat book, is also seems to be deceptive. The problem I have is not with the school, not with the district, but with Scholastic, who is hiding these books what, behind what are cute cat pictures. Um, I think the school should consider having Scholastic at least accurately describe the contents of the books or the district look for another vendor. And again, Principal Gilligan, the, the PTO or the book, they, they've all been phenomenal. Um, it's just I have an issue with them hiding this kind of stuff in these books. So thank you. Thank you. OK, anyone else? Hi, my name is Kate Bellantoni, and tonight I'd like to discuss school safety. Coming from a security background, focusing on workplace violence and active shooters, my number one fear since sending my child off to kindergarten last year was wondering if he'd be coming home alive. Our schools need more armed school resource officers, a dedicated security director, they need risk assessments done, and the school Schools need to cooperate with law enforcement requests. SRO, SRO officers aren't cheap. We know this. We're in the midst of budget right now, talking about all the exciting things we need funds for. None of that matters if you have a bunch of dead children lining our hallways. Or how about if you need to start budgeting to condemn a building that is the site of a mass murder? Stop thinking it can't happen here. Stop waiting for grants or state funding or guidance that comes after a disaster. Hire more SROs. I saw your note on the presentation tonight about restructuring the K-12 administrator to be a safety, security, and compliance administrator. Is this person an educator tasked with many other administrative duties? Or is this a person with former law enforcement experience whose sole focus is safety and security? 
increase the budget where it is needed. Last night, I attended the Putnam County, Leg Putnam County Legislator meeting because they were discussing school safety. There was a gentleman who was a former NYPD captain and SEPTED certified, which is big in Florida and created after the Parkland school shooting. He's offered his free services to conduct a thorough site assessment at our schools. In fact, he just did one at Matthew Patterson Elementary School without needing to jump through a bunch of red tape. It was approved by the superintendent within two weeks of him reaching out to her. Ms. Tona, I'd love for you to consider doing the same. I am happy to share his info with you, and I hope there would be no delay in contacting either him or another private company or firm like Altaris to do an assessment. There's no harm, there's no harm in knowing our building's vulnerabilities. It's a free, it's free, there's no harm. Cooperation with the Sheriff's Department. Okay, I have my own questions with the Sheriff and how they run business over there and why the $2 million earmarked last year for improving school security in Putnam County has yet to be rolled out to our districts properly. But last night, Sheriff McConville, he let it be known that Mayapac has not yet agreed or for that matter given any effort. Unresponsive, radio silence regarding sharing access control system keys and their CCTV feed to help assist in active shooter response. Install a panic button for quicker communication, amongst other things. Why? Well, I'm wrapping it up then. That mother, that mother, that mother, my child needs to come home alive at the end of the day. Why do I need to stand up here and beg for you to start allocating funds to increase legitimate security do risk assessments in our building and cooperate or at the very least respond to our law enforcement. Kate, Kate, you're a minute, you're a minute over. Okay. It's my last sentence. All right. God forbid something happens here. I'd like for every single one of you to think how you would feel knowing you could or should have done more. So Kate, Kate, oh, Kate, thank you for the comments. Uh, I just want to let you know, I'm not, obviously I wasn't there with the sheriff. Uh, I was in contact with the sheriff. I'm not going to get into the details of what I talked about. I'm not sure why he presented it like that, okay? So with that, I'll just say, so I've talked to him, and I know Ms. Tona has talked to him, and that characterization of what is here is not accurate, okay? So what? I know, but you're taking it as, as gospel, so it's not necessarily the truth. So with that, I'll turn it over to Ms. Tona. Thank you. Yes, uh, thanks for sharing that um, that was shared by the sheriff last night because I have been in constant contact with the sheriff's office since I came into uh, my position. And he has talked to the uh, superintendents in Putnam County about various initiatives and we've provided him with all the information that he has requested. And um, in some cases, there are things that need contracts, and we have not received those contracts from the sheriff's office. So I will definitely be in contact with him tomorrow. So I appreciate you sharing that with me, because what you shared is very different from the conversations that I've had with the sheriff. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Anyone else? Good evening, Superintendent and uh, Board. Um, I li listened to the work session um, on, from 413th related to the budgets presented that, and actually as we saw it today. Um, I realized I probably attended every school board meeting pleading for the district to take a hard look at what they're spending and try to curtail what they're spending. Try to look into areas where money could be saved, work processes streamlined, duplication eliminated, but I think it was for naught. Even though we project almost a $2.8 million 
dollars uh, additional state aid, seven hundred and ten thousand from property rental, reduced student population of forty six. Um, the increase in spending is still four point one five percent, although the actual tax levy is two point eight. We also have the capital improvement for the buses of one point three million, which is apparently going to be almost an annual uh, basis based on the presentation on how we need to replenish our, our fleet. Um, and this doesn't even deal with the governor's decree about having electric buses in the not too distant future. Um, I thought it was also interesting about the $15 million of reserve fund that we have for various items. It seems like quite a large contingency. Um, I was also intrigued by the mention now of universal pre-K for the future since we would get more state aid for the program. The question is, how much would this pre-K program really cost and do we really need it? I guess this is for the future budget. Um, I did appreciate all the advancement in the programs in the elementary, middle, and high school. Um, I definitely think that the, the STEAM and all that's very, very important. Um, but now that we have libraries in almost every classroom, I'm not sure why we have main libraries anymore. I know they're using them for media centers, but maybe there's something we could have done instead of spending all that money to renovate them. Um, I am not sure what Reveal Math is. I, I don't know. It wasn't. I mean, they talked about the program, but I don't really know how it's different from math. Um, early in the year, Superintendent Tona presented some of the district's results on standardized tests. They showed mostly declines, which after COVID and lack of in-person per, uh, learning, I would expect. Um, I didn't see other than uh, from the, I guess, transition to, from ninth to, into ninth grade, how we're dealing with any of these uh, deficits or deficiencies. Um, um, okay. Um, also, um, you had about 20 seconds. Okay, left. well, okay, I also didn't talk about any areas about uh, trades, and there's 14% of the school that doesn't go to college. Um, opportunities for trades, these can be highly lucrative, paid careers, electricians, plumbing, welders, carpenters. Um, there's a drastic shortage, and we should be looking to partner with organizations that can provide that. Um, the other area is the social and emotional learning, which I really never quite understand. To me, it seems like that's personal and it's a parent thing. I'm not sure why the schools are now involved in that. Um, so I'm just hoping that the community will understand uh, what all this budget means and will vote accordingly on May 16th. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Franklin. <laughs> Anybody else? Ms. LaRocco? Good evening. So looking at everything that was, was presented to everyone today, I'm a little disappointed that Mayor Pack continues to use Teachers College. Um, it is said that about maybe a third of our nation, fourth graders, okay, are not reading at grade level. That's a lot. Okay, but we continue to use this widely nationwide program by Lucy Corkins. There has been so much research, okay, about this program that we as educators, myself as well, know that it has failed our children. And we see it with the scores plummeting. The scores are just dropping and dropping, and forget about COVID. Before that, they kept dropping. So if one thing about this program that I see from the research is that um, they started to use a phonics component that's not really there. They're lying to you. Phonics is very, very important for emerging leader, um, readers. Um, the research shows that they are not developing good reading skills with this program, and we are putting it on a pedestal. And it's really, really not 
where it should be at all. So we're just setting up our kids in our town for failure by promoting it and you know making a wonderful presentation you know, thinking that it's like one of the best curriculums out there. I think there are many more that we can explore together. Um, it also does not help children develop um, vocabulary. And last, the struggling readers, they're going to be completely lost with this program. Yep. ESL children um, are going to be completely lost with it. So I think Mayor Pack needs to do a little bit better at reviewing um, and looking at another curriculum for the young ones. I don't have young ones. You got, but, a, you got 30 seconds. Yeah, I, I know, Ben. Um, second, I'm the book mom, right? The book banner and everything like that. But let me tell you, it would, made, it would have been so much easier if you would have taken three of the board members' recommendation and said all challenge books, books that are appropriate, would need parental permission. I had to go through like a circus to have my daughter blocked. She, she, had st she still had access. She still had access to all of the books when I requested that she didn't. Could have been taken care of if you would have taken those books and put them aside and if John comes up and says, I want to read The Bluest Eyes about a young girl being raped by her father from the rapist uh, point of view. Melissa, Melissa, wrap it up. Come on. Of course, because you don't like to hear the truth. Hey, you're out of time. You don't like to hear the truth. You're at thir three minutes. You don't like to you. hear the truth, Ben. It's weird and I never, I, you don't like to hear the truth. You can tell me after. Okay? You can talk to me after. You got three, you're at 350. But parents and, and the public should know that my child still had access to pornographic material. All right, come on, stop. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Melody. All right. As always, I commend the people who come to the podium because they're parents and they're advocating for their children. And that's all you do as a parent. You give your, your, your life, and that's the reason all of us are up here. So I, I commend you, and I like the exchange of ideas. So I appreciate it, and I, I always appreciate that coming up. So I just want to thank the folks who come up. I also want to wait very quickly before we, we put, uh, wrap up here. The budget is an incredibly important part of the work that we do here, and it's an incredibly important part of the community. And we've just adopted it. That means we support it. Uh, Ms. Tona is gonna do literally a road show. She's gonna go on the road. And I want you to go vote. So um, I am running for, the, uh, for a re-election. But I'm not asking for your vote now because it's not appropriate, it's not professional. But yeah, I want you to vote. Because last year, complacency really nipped this in the butt. If, you, if you, you make your decision, but go and vote. There's not many places where you can say, hey, I went in and I, and I voted. There's a lot of things out of our control in our lives, in our careers, and in, in just the world. Here you have the control. And um, that's, what I'm, that, that's what I'm telling you. I'm asking and pleading with you to do. Again, I thank all the folks who came here tonight, and I, again, thank the administrators, um, and we'll, we're going to close now. So I, can I get a motion to move to executive session to discuss uh, personnel matters? Second, please. All in favor? Thank you very much, and we'll see you next week.